Today's video is a Chanel unboxing. I can't believe how bad it is. Take a shot every time I say the word classic flap in this video because by now you should be hammered. I mean the colour is cute but she never gets worn. Well hello everybody. I hope you're all doing well and keeping well and I hope you're all ready for today's video. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, so go follow me on there if you don't. I showed you guys I bought something the other day from Chanel but I haven't showed you inside the box. So I'm going to unbox it with you in this video but I'm also going to do a review on all of my Chanel handbags. I'll do size comparisons, I'll talk about the leather, the wear and tear and which size Chanel bag I think personally is the best size. So let's start off first of all with the unboxing. Now this is something that I have ummed and ahed about buying for many, many years. I've tried it on many times in the Chanel store. I actually bought it already in a different colour and I took it back, but I only took it back because I didn't like the colour. And then I mentioned this story in my wishlist of 2023 video, but I saw a girl when I was in Dubai for New Year and she had this bag on. She just looked so cool and it made me think, do you know what? I really feel like that would go with my wardrobe and go really well in my handbag collection. So when I came back to London, I went to store to try and try it on and it was sold out everywhere and it has been ever since. So I spoke to my Chanel SA. She said, look, I'll put you on the waiting list. When we get one in, I'll give you a text. And she texted me on Friday. I was actually out walking near the store anyway. And she said, Freya, I have the bag you're after. So would you like to come and try it on? So... Here is the box. I have already unwrapped it. I'm sorry. I've actually already worn it. I wore it the day after I bought it. I just couldn't wait. As always, it came with the Chanel Camellia, which you can see just there, and then the ribbon around it as well. So like all Chanel bags, or I believe all Chanel bags, it came in a box like this. I will open it up. And inside we have the tissue paper. I tried so hard not to rip the tissue paper, but I failed massively. I love the sound of fresh tissue paper. Inside we have the dust bag and also this little fan thing. They always do this in the boxes. I think it's very clever with the tissue paper. We have a care card. This is five care tips by Chanel for their leather goods. We have the dust bag. And then I know so many of you know exactly what bag this is already, but there might be a few of you new here and you haven't watched my other videos, so you won't know what it is. But it is the... Chanel 19 black leather gold hardware in the smallest size so it's not the wok though because actually the wok is the smallest size this is the smallest Chanel 19 bag it's my favorite size if I'm honest I do love the bigger ones as well but I feel like for my lifestyle they're a little bit too big for me this is the perfect size I felt like it would be a really good addition to my handbag collection because it's such a casual Chanel bag I do love the classic flaps and you can definitely wear them casually, but given the price of them now, which is obscene, I don't know how I feel about wearing those bags day to day. Don't get me wrong, it's not like this was cheap. This was not a cheap bag. This cost me a load of money and I will be selling some of my other handbags to slot this one into my collection. But it just feels a little bit better for everyday life than the Chanel Classic flap does. On the weekend, I wore this with a bomber jacket with a little Chanel brooch. A, I'll actually insert a photo because I did take photos that day. Leather trousers, Converse, just really casual and I love how this looks. Something else I really love about it as well is the fact that you've got this little top handle. So it looks lovely wearing it on the crook of your arm like that. Or of course you have the crossbody strap option as well. So it's quite versatile too. But I do think this would look really nice on nights out as well. Now I believe the Chanel 19 comes in two different leathers. Don't quote me on that but I think it's lamb or goat. This is lambskin. And to be honest, lambskin is not always my favourite. I'll show you one of my other lambskin Chanel bags later. But it's quite a fragile leather. You have to be really careful with it. But I have watched many reviews on the Chanel 19. And a lot of people are telling me it doesn't scratch like the trendy does. I'm unsure why, but hopefully I find that mine doesn't scratch too much either. The design of the 19 is meant to be quite slouchy and chilled. I can't lie, I don't really love slouchy handbags, so I'm going to put an insert in this because I want it to stay as structured as this as possible. I'm not going to overfill it. I don't want it to look kind of all saggy. I know that's the look, but that's why I prefer the smaller size because the bigger the size of the bag, the more slouchier they become. And I know some people love that look. I do think it looks cool on other people, but for me, 
I like the fact that the smaller one is a lot more structured. So if I open it up, it's just one big flap inside. It is still stuffed, so I'll take this out. I restuffed it after I used it. I do that with most of my bags though when I'm storing them. The inside is actually bright red, which reminds me of my Louis Vuitton Capucines. That bag is also bright fuchsia, like pink inside. Actually, is this? No, this is definitely like a burgundy red. So it's just one big giant compartment, which is really good for every day because you can pop lots of bits in there. But as I've already said, I'm not going to be overfilling it too much because I don't want it to go too saggy. You have one zip compartment at the back. And then if I turn it around, you do also have a back pocket as well, which you can pop things in, which is actually quite similar to the classic flap. One of my favorite things about this bag has to be the Chanel CC on the front. I absolutely adore it. I just think it looks so pretty. I also really love the two-tone metal on the strap. So if you can see, if I get a little bit up closer, you've got a little bit of silver running down it and then it's gold as well. It actually matches my watch quite nicely. But I think the silver running through it really helps with the casual look of the bag. I'm a girl that loves to wear trainers day to day. I'm definitely a casual dresser. So I really feel like this is going to fit into my wardrobe and just go with so many of my outfits. You'll have to let me know if you're a fan of the Chanel 19 or if it's not for you. I know not everyone loves it, but I really do. After I've worn it a few more times, I am going to give you guys like a proper review. And also in my Zara haul, I'm gonna style it up with lots of different outfits. That's why I wanted to film this video before I did my Zara haul, because I'm definitely gonna be featuring this bag with outfits in that. So as we're on the subject of Chanel bags, I thought it'd be a good video to talk more on the other Chanel bags that I own. I always get questions like which Chanel bag do I like the most, which is the best to use, which is the most versatile and just general wear and tear questions. So I'm going to go through in order of when I bought each bag. So the first Chanel bag I ever bought was this. This is the Trendy CC in the smallest size and this was always like my dream bag. I always regretted not buying the classic flap first. That was only because the year after I bought this, the classic flap went up by like another thousand pounds and this has almost stayed a very similar price i mean it has gone up by a few hundred pounds but nothing like the classic flap has so i wish i'd bought my classic flaps first got them at a lower price and then bought this after but anyway i love this bag i think it's absolutely beautiful my favorite thing about it has to be at the top plaque just there where it says chanel on the top of it i don't know if you can see with the reflection in the window i also love that it has the top handle so you can wear it on the crook of your arm or you can wear it crossbody with the strap i've said this a number of times but listen to how squeaky the handle is when i wear it and it makes this sound it's almost embarrassing something i don't love about this bag is how much it scratches so this is in lambskin and this actually put me off ever buying a classic flap in lambskin because of how easily it scratches i really look after my bags i'm super super careful with them when you work hard and spend your money on things like this you really do look after them trust me but this bag no matter how much i look after it it still scratches i don't know if you can see but right there across the front there's a big scratch on the back, there's a scratch there as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, the scratches aren't terrible, but given the amount of use this bag's had, which is, to be honest, not that much, and how well it's been looked after. Oh my God, I've actually just noticed there's like a big sort of scratch on the top there as well. Can you see it on the handle? But given the amount it's been used and how well I look after it, I feel like it's not in the best condition compared to my other handbags. Barely any of my other bags, touch wood, have a mark on them, but this has more than a few, which makes me really sad. I also very rarely wear this bag. I feel like sometimes it doesn't really go with my style, and I never really reach for it. Something that is good about it, though, is it fits quite a lot in it. It's got three big compartments in it, so you can fit loads of stuff in it. I do actually currently have a hairband in this. I have a t-shirt that's stuffing it, and also a couple of receipts. I am sometimes tempted to sell it, but then I feel like if I did sell it, I would regret it. And even though it hasn't gone up in price too much since I bought it, I think it still has increased by about 700 pounds. So I feel like it's probably worth holding on to. But yeah, the leather and the scratches are not cute. The next Chanel bag I then bought was this. This is the most iconic bag other than a Birkin of all time this is the chanel classic flap medium size caviar leather and gold hardware i bought this i want to say a year and a half after i bought the trendy so i saved up 
and I went and I bought this. And this is when the classic flap addiction really, really started. I feel like once you have one of these, you want it in every single colour. Although the current price increases means that I'm being a lot more picky when it comes to the colours and I will not be buying as many of these as I once thought. I actually went into Chanel before I bought the Chanel 19 earlier on last week because I went to go and view a Chanel classic flap in beige because I've been on the hunt for a beige or a tan classic flap for the longest time and the beige is just never quite right. And the one I saw was beautiful but the prices now just make me want to be sick and unless it's perfect and I love it and I feel like I couldn't live without it, I'm not buying it. I just can't justify the new prices given the quality of them. There are still a few colours that I really like, for example a beige one, I'd love a grey one but other than that I don't think I'm going to be buying many more of these. But that's always famous last words. However, I love this. It is perfect. It goes with every outfit I wear, whether it's dressing up for the evening with a pair of heels, just casual in the daytime with a pair of jeans, or even with gym wear. This is the most perfect bag for just every occasion. It's so stunning, it's easy to wear, and something I'm so happy I did was get caviar leather, because this, unlike the trendy, has been worn so many times. To the club, nights out, days out, this has been by my side. I actually had a whole glass of vodka lemonade spilt all over the bottom of it, didn't realize it was sat, like basically swimming, in lemonade in a club one night didn't realize it dried out and you would never ever know there is actually a mark on the bottom of it but that is nothing to do with the lemonade incident and that it will actually just wipe off the caviar leather means it's so durable it's so scratch resistant i haven't got a single scratch on it you wouldn't be able to see it anyway because the grain leather is so so durable it's only about two years old possibly is it three years old no i think it's two years old so of course it's still very structured which i love and the classic flaps do stay very structured you have a look at the vintage ones the padding starts to go but the structure always stays i love the way you can double up the strap so you can obviously wear it on your shoulder like that or crossbody like this one negative about this bag and the only negative i have is the fact that the hardware has tarnished and I've mentioned this before in other videos in my handbag collection and many times before. But if you're new to my channel and you've never heard me talk about it, I am pretty fuming about this situation. So if I get a little bit closer, you might be able to see it. But the turn lock there has tarnished and it's actually turning silver. I wouldn't mind so much if it happened now because I have worn this many times. Even though after two years, considering the price of this bag, I wouldn't expect it to happen for 20 years. But it happened within about 10 wears. It wasn't long at all before the lock started to tarnish. And I've said it before, but I actually sometimes get embarrassed because it kind of looks a little bit fake. Because it's turning silver and you just would not expect that of such an expensive handbag. I did take it into Chanel and they said they would send it off for repair. But I have heard the repair can take like three months and I wasn't prepared to be without it for so long especially because I didn't have well I obviously had the trendy but I didn't have another Chanel bag like this I have now since got one very similar so I could probably send it off for repair but yeah I just think that is such a shame and just shows you how bad the quality is given the price as I said my black classic flap started an addiction so not too long after came my white classic flap I think it was the following year though, I so lose track of time. But this is my white classic flap, caviar leather, champagne hardware. She's stunning, I love her so much. So this was my first ever small classic flap and it actually made me realize that I prefer the small size to the medium size. So this is how they both look next to each other like that. There's not a huge amount of difference in the size of the two of them. And to be honest, there's not much difference in the price. The small is only about 500 pound cheaper than the medium. So I do often think if you're gonna buy one of these bags, you may as well just spend the extra 500 pound and get the bigger size. But I prefer how the small looks on me personally. I think it just suits my body frame more than the medium. I think the medium sometimes can look a little bit big. The only thing I'd say about the small is it doesn't fit half as much in as the medium. Even though they don't look too dissimilar size wise, inside I find the small fits far less. Now when I bought the small, I was told I need to be careful because of color transfer. Obviously it being a white bag or any type of light leather handbag, you need to be careful wearing it with jeans, dark colors, but what I've learnt with this Chanel bag is you can't really wear it with any colour other than white because the colour will transfer. Last summer I wore this with a green shirt. You can't really see it, I did manage to get most of it out, but some of the stitching on the back is slightly darker than on the front because the green did go onto the bag. Also I've had a little bit of a disaster inside the bag and it kind of hurts my heart. I know there's a handbag clinic I could send this to and they could get rid of it, so that makes me feel a little bit better. 
I don't know how this happened, but there is a mark inside the flap. Can you see it just there? It's almost like an ink stain, but I would never put a pen in this bag, so I don't know how it's happened. You probably also noticed there's a mark there as well, and that's from the way that the double flap shuts. It marks it all the time. I am able to rub that off, but the mark just appears again. It's also marked on the top there as well, where the chain rubs against it too. And there's also slight tarnishing on the hardware just up there. Can you see it? And this bag is barely a year old. So when people say the lighter colour leather bags are hard to care for, they're not joking. All that being said, I do have a white YSL bag and there's barely any marks on that. So maybe it's to do with this leather, I'm unsure. The funny thing I always find with the white caviar leather compared to the black is it's a lot stiffer. I don't know why that is, but these feel like totally different leathers, although they are exactly the same. Overall, I do love the white classic flap. It goes with so much stuff, but it does make me sad, the fact that it does get marked so easily. But it's still such a beautiful bag, and it did make me realise that I do prefer the smaller size compared to the medium. After the white classic flap came along my first ever Chanel Mini in a very bright colour. This is the only colourful bag I own. I have owned other colourful bags in the past. I got rid of them all because I don't wear them. This is the last one standing, but guys, I feel like it's almost time for her to go. I've had this bag... Over a, no, it's nearly a year, be a year coming up, and I've worn it once. One time I've worn this bag. The protective sticker is still on the hardware at the front, and all of the original tissue paper is still inside. And if I'm going to be completely honest, the only time I've ever worn this is for an Instagram photo. I didn't buy it for that reason, I bought it to wear it all of the time, but the colour of this, I just find it so hard to dress. I love pink, it is one of my favourite colours, but this is kind of like a corally pink and it just doesn't go with too much stuff. I don't want to talk about it too much because I've definitely said all of this in my last handbag collection video, so I don't want to be boring anyone that's already heard everything I'm saying. But it just makes me sad that I don't wear it more and I am really, really, really tempted to sell it. This was a seasonal colour, I have looked into it and I could sell this for just over a £1,000 more than I paid for it. So the temptation is very high to sell it, but I feel like I want to buy another mini to replace it because I absolutely love the mini style. And as I love the mini style so much, my next bag, of course, was another mini. And this is probably my most used handbag in my entire handbag collection video. I've had this, when did I get it? I got it in the summer, I think, didn't I? I was on a waiting list for it for about six months, I'd say. It's hard to get hold of this bag, but it was so worth the wait. I've spoken about this many times in a number of different videos. I spoke about it in my best and worst purchases of 2022. And of course, it was one of my best purchases. This is also lambskin, but so durable. It's barely got any scratches on it. And the hardware is champagne. What I love about the mini is the size of it. It's so practical for every day. It's cute enough and like small enough to wear on nights out. So I often wear this with a dress and I think it looks really lovely. The best thing about it is how much it fits in. So it actually fits exactly the same, if not more, than the small classic flap and I think that's because inside they're pretty much the same the small has a double flap which kind of makes the inside smaller than on the mini if that makes sense if I put them side by side as well you can just see the difference size wise so there's actually quite a bit in it and the biggest difference which is the most noticeable difference is the fact that the small and the medium and the jumbo all have the double strap option where the mini doesn't that is probably the only downside to the mini is the fact that you can't double up the strap. I've said it before, but you can, there is a trick. You kind of loop the strap through like this and then pull it round and you can do it like that, but I think it kind of damages the leather. And you can just kind of tell that it's not really meant to be doubled up, but the option's there if you want it. But for me, this bag is perfect. I grab it every single day. I actually have to stop myself from wearing it so much. It goes with everything, it's the perfect size. And the reason I would almost always recommend the mini rather than the medium or the small classic flat, by the way, this is the size comparison between the medium and the mini, and if I do side by side. So there's a really big difference in the size here when you look at them like this, you can really see the difference. But the reason nowadays I almost always say get a mini classic flap is because of the price. Minis tend to really hold their value too, which is really good if you're ever thinking of reselling them. I now want a mini classic flap in every single color. I love the khaki ones, that was seasonal, but I've got that on my wish list. Also, I'd love a grey one. And also because the price of the minis isn't as extreme as the small and the medium classic flaps. I'll leave all the prices on the screen when I talk about each bag, by the way. It's still a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not. It is, but in the handbag world, 
this isn't too bad. But given the price, I can kind of justify it buying it in fun colours. And cost per wear for this will end up being minimal because I honestly wear it so, so much. And I know if I got other colours, I'd wear them just as much too. Well, that is the last bag in my Chanel handbag collection. One day I will have hundreds of them as long as they bring the prices down, which will never happen. But we'll see how that goes. I hope so much you've enjoyed this video or found the information I've shared with you a little bit helpful. I always get questions from you guys asking me to review certain handbags and my Chanel bags are probably the bags I get asked about the most. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you don't already, subscribe to my channel, give this video a big thumbs up, follow me on Instagram and on TikTok and I will hopefully see you in my next one. Which if you're into handbags is actually a YSL handbag giveaway. So hopefully I will see you there. Take care guys. Bye bye.